Hello everyone, my name is Anthony and welcome to my channel Dad Boards, where we explore some of the parallels between parenting and playing games. Happy holidays to you. Today is the first video in our series of holiday shopping guide for 2020. What I'm going to do here in this series is show you some very common household name games that you most likely either own, know someone who owns, or have played, and give you some game suggestions that are sort of a lateral move from those games. So it's sort of trying to modernize what games you might be exposed to in your house and giving some people some fun gifts for the holiday season. There are two games that we're going to look at today, and the first household game that we're going to compare to is Jenga. Jenga is a tower stacking game with wooden uh, little wooden pieces. You pull one out from the middle, put it on top. It's fun. You've probably played it a million times. There's lots of variations on it. The one thing I personally don't like about Jenga is I hate when the tower falls. It gives me a little bit of anxiety because it's usually very loud and heavy playing on a glass table. A big no-no with this game. So the big difference with these two games I'm going to show you today is that they're not made of wood. They are cards. So you're just going to be folding cards. If that card tower falls, it's very quiet. No big deal. So first game we're going to take a look at here is Rhino Hero. This is from Hobby Games who make excellent, excellent kids games, uh, fun for kids and family. I highly recommend looking at their catalog of stuff regardless. And second game we'll take a quick look at here is Cat Tower. This is from IDW Games. Uh, both of these games say they play in about 15 to 20 minutes and are appropriate for uh, ages five and up. So let's take a look at how these games work and we'll come back. All right, folks, let's check out Rhino Hero here from Hobby Games. In the box, you're going to get a bunch of these roof cards, which you will play from your hand. You'll also get a bunch of these wall cards, which you can fold. Ah, gasp, I know. It's a little anxiety-inducing at first, uh, but then oddly satisfying as you get used to it. And finally, you'll get this little Rhino Hero token. And in this game, you're basically going to be building a giant tower using these as roof and floor cards and these as wall cards. So you fold these, like that, you put a new roof on top, repeat, repeat, and eventually you'll get something kind of like this. The object of this game is to be the first player to get rid of your hand of roof cards here. So when it's your turn, you're going to choose one of your roof cards and you're going to place it on the existing wall cards that the previous player had just put up. So I would place this right here carefully. Okay. And then I would build however many walls are outlined here on that particular card. So here would be two. We'll do one in this corner like that. And we do one in this corner, like that. And that's your turn. Now, some of the roof cards that you play have some actions on them, which will help you uh, either get rid of more of your cards or prevent people from getting rid of their cards. This first one here is the reverse symbol. Basically, this changes the direction of play. So if it's currently going in clockwise order, it's now going to go counterclockwise. Next, we have this exclamation point here, which forces the next player to lose their turn. It's basically like a skip. We've got the plus one here. Again, messing with the next player, you force them to draw a new roof card before they can play one from their hand. So again, you're adding stuff to their hand. Here we have the double roof card, which allows you to play a second card on top of this one. So you get to get rid of an extra card from your hand. Only catch is you can't play another double on top of this one. And finally, we've got our Rhino Hero. If you place this card, the next player needs to grab Rhino Hero from wherever he currently is in the tower and add him to that new card. So for example, if I place that, okay, first of all, I would build my two walls here like that. that and Rhino Hero goes right here. 
So as the tower gets higher, it's going to be a little trickier to retrieve a Rhino Hero and put him up to the next level. Plus, some of these um, floor cards have outlines of just one wall. Okay, so that makes it even harder to keep this thing steady and placing new ones on top can get a little tricky at some points. Okay, that'd be a double. Uh, so then I could put that one there. There we go. Uh, and as you can see, you can get pretty tall. Play is going to end. Again, if someone gets rid of their entire hand, they will be the winner. Um, if the building does collapse, if someone does knock it over, then whoever has the least amount of cards left in their hand would be the winner. I really enjoy Rhino Hero. It's very simple. It's very fun. Um, it has a feel of, of card house building. I don't know if you guys ever did that when you were younger. I used to do that with my grandfather all the time. Take an old pack of playing cards, fold them, and, and just sort of build this structure. So it kind of feels like that. Um, also, it's easy to teach, right? There's only a couple of symbols on those cards, two of which are usually quite familiar to folks, the skip and reverse action, because if you've played Uno, you know what those things mean. So there's very little to teach here. You could also be competitive as an adult playing with kids in this game. You'd be surprised sometimes how much better kids are at this game than adults. Uh, so that's Rhino Hero. Let's go from one animal to another and take a look at Cat Tower. So let's take a look inside this adorable looking cat box here for Cat Tower. Inside the box, you're going to get some of these cat cards, which you are going to be folding during the game in two spaces like this. So they become these little sort of standing cats that you will stack as the game goes on. You also get some of these catty fatty cards, which are flat straight cards that do not get folded. So think of these as the sort of roof floor cards from Rhino Hero. You're going to be using those as well. You also get one of these big wooden chunky die here. All different symbols. We'll go over that in a bit. And finally, you get a bunch of these little cat tokens, which will do different things throughout the game. As I say, you're going to be folding these cats in two spaces here and the way you place them is you turn them perpendicular to each other so that they sort of stand on the back there you can see that next one would then go this way and eventually if you're lucky enough you may end up with something like that so in cat tower when it's your turn you're going to roll this die and resolve whatever the face shows you this one right here means you're going to be taking one cat card from your hand, adding it to the tower. We have this double cat, which means you're going to be stacking two cards from your hand onto the tower. There's also this fish icon. This will let you stack one of your cat cards, but instead of right side up, you flip it upside down, lay the cat on its back on top of the tower. We've also got this cat paw, which I think is the best thing to roll in my opinion because it allows you to get rid of one of your cards from your hand, but you're forcing another player that you choose to do the stacking for you. So if the tower does fall, that person takes the penalty instead of you. By the way, in this game, if you topple the tower, you don't lose automatically. However, there is a penalty where you have to draw two new cards into your hand. And finally on here, we've got the Caddy Fatty. If you roll this, instead of taking one of the cat cards from your hand, you'll be taking one of these fat cat cards, which are flat, they don't get folded. You put those, put this one right on top of the tower, just like you would with one of your regular cards. Again, but it's flat. And then also, you will then flip over one of these tokens and resolve whatever the effect is on the other side. So let's take a look at the six possibilities you might get if you are flipping one of those tokens. Um, first off, you've got another fatty caddy, which would make the next player do the same thing that you just did. Draw one of the uh, flat cards, fat, flat, fat, flat cat cards, put it on the tower, flip a token, and resolve it. So besides that, we've got the skip, skips the next person's turn. We've got the reverse, changes the order of play. We've got the cat paw, similar to the one on the die face, but this will make the next person 
or rather give the next person the option to force someone else to stack one of their cards. We've got the belly rub here, which is similar to the fish die face. If this is the one that's flipped, next player has to place one of their cat cards upside down. And finally, interesting here, we've got the uh, equal cats for all token. If this is flipped, all the players put all their cat cards together and they're shuffled up. Well, not much shuffled up, they're all the same, but they are then redistributed evenly amongst the players. So this will change up how many cards people might have. So that was Cat Tower, folks. Uh, another fun one here. Big difference, I think, with this game that I like is if you are the one who collapses the tower, you don't automatically lose the game. It's going to be very frustrating for some younger kids. So it's nice in this game where you do take a little bit of a penalty, but you're not out by any means. Um, both of these games are great. I uh, highly recommend them for kids and families. The artwork on them is fantastic. If you take a look at some of the Rhino Hero wall cards here, they have great artwork on the outside. Looks like an actual building here. There's our puppy. Flowers. Oh, this is upside down. Pig brushing his teeth, whatnot. And then there's even stuff on the inside. You get that wallpaper, windows, birds outside and whatnot. So it looks pretty cool. Um, cat Tower, cute, chunky, chubby looking cats, if that's your thing, right? I personally like the Rhino Hero game a little bit better. Um, but again, it comes down to personal preference. Also, there's something to be said about making a tower of stuff, right? It's just sort of satisfying. Kids do it all the time. But even if you're playing this game with your kids around the table, it's just fun to see that thing kind of grow. Even if it's not your particular turn, you know, when someone else's turn to place you're like, oh my God, are they going to fall? Is it going to fall? Is it going to fall? And that's fun anxiety, right? That's, that's part of the joy of these games. Also, I should let you know there is another version of Rhino Hero called Rhino Hero Super Battle, um, which is much taller. <laughs> There's a lot more pieces. You're building multiple towers and connecting them with other pieces as well. And there's different characters and some dice rolling and there's monkeys. So there's that. I uh, hope you enjoyed this little intro on, on some modern games. Again, this is the first of a series of videos that I do plan on doing comparing some older games to some newer ones and just giving you some holiday shopping ideas either for yourself, uh, your kids, your nieces, nephews, family, anybody who's even not really a gamer would enjoy these games because like I said, they're very light, easy to play, easy to teach, easy to get into. Thanks so much for watching folks. Uh, if you did enjoy this video, please give it a thumbs up or subscribe to the channel. I really, really would appreciate that and uh, happy holidays to you. We'll see you next time. Bye.